Sippers, welcome to this episode of the Tea With Me podcast. Now we're doing something a wee bit different on this episode. We're releasing a Patreon exclusive episode just to sort of show you what you're missing. We're sort of pulling our nighty, our nighty up a wee bit just to reveal a... What are those things? Garter? Is that what it is? A girder? Garter? Garter, yeah. Just showing your garter a little bit. You know, and seeing if you know if you like this, that's the sort of thing we're doing over on Patreon. We're having people that, you know, because we have mainly comedians on the main podcast, but on Patreon we've got comedians too. But then we have people like our guest today, who's Mr. Jordan Adetunji, who, I swear to God, has his first cup of tea on the podcast. If that's not worth a minimum of three quid a month for extra content, I don't know what the hell is. So enjoy this episode. Jordan is a musician, you know, who's living here, who's very much based here. But just, you know, making hip-hop, making rock music, doing things a little bit differently. And he says himself, he's like, people say to me, why are you not in London? Why are you not in New York? And he goes, just want to be here, mate. You know, so I had a great chat with him. He's a lovely young guy. I sound like Curtis from Love Island. He's a lovely young man. Okay, so you're going to enjoy this episode. Before we get into it, we are sponsored by Manscaped. By the way, the Patreon is patreon.com slash tea with me podcast. We do a bonus episode there like this one every Monday. And then every Friday we do the live podcast. And that is just an episode of the podcast. You guessed it, it's live. You can ask questions, suggest topics during it, all that sort of thing. It's a hell of a lot of fun. But we're sponsored by Manscaped. Manscaped.com. That's where you go if you're asking yourself the question, how do, I def- how do I take it to a different level in the downstairs department? Like, you know me, I go a little bit too far sometimes. You know, I use my lawnmower 3.0 to shave down there. I use some of the products, but then I also get circumcised because it's never enough for me. You know, I got circumcised. What am I going to do next? An extension? Maybe. Be plastic extension at the base. <laughs> like, uh, you know, like you sort of twist it and then you can... I would like. I would prefer that. I think I. Do, I wouldn't want an extension that just gives me just a massive cock. I would want a bigger cock. I would want an extendable one. So just different day, different mood, different size. You know, you're having a bad day. No luck's going your way. Extend that out. Make it bigger. You know, you just want to get. You know, you want to keep your feet on the ground. Bring it back to like an average guy size. Like, what do you? What would you guys have? Like, you know, seven, eight inches. You know, whatever normal guys have, I have no idea. So, manscaped.com is the place where you go to get the lawnmower 3.0. It's over here. It's behind me. Oh, now you know when that, you know when that sound happens? It's something sexy. And it doesn't get sexier than making sure your pubic hair is in good shape. There's a wee LED torch on that, so you can do it in the dark with a cousin or whatever it is you want to do. You've got ball deodorant, ball toner, ball wipes. If it exists and it involves your balls, they've thought of it. Manscaped.com, use a code tea with me for 20% off and free shipping. Let's get stuck into this Patreon episode that we're releasing publicly with Jordan Adetunji. This is a Tea With Me podcast. I'm out. Welcome to this Patreon episode of the Tea With Me podcast. It's a guest episode. Look, I like to... I like to dress well for these episodes. I like to make a bit of an effort. <laughs> and what I don't like to be is overshadowed in the fashion stakes. But my guest today, Jordan Aratunji, by the way, I've been freaking out for the last half hour and saying that right. Have I said that right? Yeah, that was perfect. That yes. was actually surprisingly very good. I didn't have it right at the start of the day. I said to the guys, I was like, yeah, I think it's this. And then it wasn't that. And they very quickly corrected me. So, Class. so that's a big weight off my shoulders. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jordan, cheers for coming on. My Thanks, first man. guest for all my first question for all guests is do you drink tea tell me a little bit about your background with tea is it something maybe you've dipped in and out of or have you just always been a non-tea drinker right this is going to be crazy i've actually never drunk tea before i'm not joking right i swear (laughs) if one of the guys was able to run down I'm, like, are you open to trying it? I could try it, yeah. Oh, this is, right, like I've been doing this podcast for, Dan Long, we've been doing this for a year. Just over a year. We've done this podcast for just over a year. Yeah. And never have we had someone who's not had tea have their no. first drink of tea on the podcast. Shh. 
shit. I, I like used to make it for my mum all the time and never drank it. And you were never like for what rate? Did you just think you wouldn't like it or? I just felt it was for grown ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in my head, it's always just been that way for some reason. It's just been installed that way. So I'm just like, man, I don't need to drink that. I know, I know we're like, how are we go? What sort of way do you make it? Because, you know, I've been drinking tea for so long. I know how I like it. He likes his different. He likes yeah. his different. I think we go regular amount of milk. Um, <laughs> I'd say 12, 15 dips. Yeah. Something like that. No sugar. No well, sugar. that's the thing. Or do you have a sweet tooth? Yeah, I love sweets. Give like, me sugar. Give one sugar. Fuck my. This is this is the See best. See if I start vomiting or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I can't be vomiting. Your career's just. Imagine just after this, you can never sing again. <laughs> Man, I don't even know what I would do. I'd just start crying. <laughs> Fuck, I, I can't wait for this. It's gonna be great. Make a clip out of this right now. Uh, Jordan, so you're a you're a music artist. Um, I started seeing your stuff about. I guess about a year ago just oh, you know wow. popping up instagram twitter that kind of thing nice and honestly you have some of the best looking content in terms of like videos and oh, clips thanks, and all that kind of thing yeah. it's it's great so so i want to like go back a bit and find out more about you how you got into music um are you like are you have an english accent a bit of both everyone right, okay. says because basically i moved here when i was 11 okay 10 came back and then do my whole grew up here basically so whole secondary school here then i went to uni and i went back to london so yeah. i was in between london and here for so long so yeah. it's just kind of messed up now did you find <laughs> that like when you were in london you were you had more of a london accent and then when you came back here you were just like getting yeah. back to here it just comes yeah. back here that, that's what happens to me but i i was ori i'm originally from london i was born in london and then okay. i moved to i moved here when i was about 10. okay yeah how did you find growing up here? Like, you good experience growing up here? It was here? mad, yeah. I, man, I, I loved it. Like, I loved it. I was into football, into everything. Like, and I went to, like, Ashfield Boys. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. East Belfast. Like, so I've lived in East Belfast most of my life. So my brain is East Belfast, kind of. That's my life, li literally. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, I mean, going between the two. I mean, we'll, we'll get into music and we can go back a bit. Yeah. But, like, when did your kind of journey into music start? Was that here? Because I don't. Yeah, I don't imagine like uh, do you describe your music. I, I I read this could be wrong as like alternative hip hop. Yeah, I would say it's more alternative hip hop because I do dip into loads of different genres. It's just not that one thing, and I think that's because of me living here and growing up here. I think yeah. it's just adapted that way and kind of changed. Yeah, because if you're in London and like you want to get into the rap game, like there's probably a lot of people you can speak to about it. Yeah, literally. Whereas if, when you're in East Belfast, you're like, who can I get references <laughs> from for big this? Johnny down the road or something, <laughs> yeah. literally. Yeah. So, um, so like, yeah, I mean, it's alternative hip hop, but then I've seen stuff you've done that's that's kind of like a bit more like rock. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like you definitely. know, like that kind of thing. And yeah, I mean, is it just like living in Belfast, like growing up here and being from here? Hip hop, it do, it. There are not two things that you link together. Literally, I think you know? it's a case of like, when I was at home for being so young, it was just like all the people that I was surrounded by and everything. Like I was never really allowed to listen to hip hop music in my house. Like my like because of the swearing. Just just because the swearing, yeah, yeah, basically. And um, so I used to have uh PlayStation games like Need for Speed. So yeah. Need for Speed had all these games in it, and it had like um. It had, no, Need for Speed had these um, these tracks in it, and they were all like metalcore and like post punk tracks. So I was just like, "What's this?" And like Skate Three as well had all those tracks. So I was just down. I used to look up the tracks and then type them in on YouTube and download them all. So uh, okay, I firstly started listening to kind of rock music, and then Busta Rhymes came in, then hip hop, then Eminem came in with a like I had like this iPod Nano, like this green mm -hmm. eye, and I just used to download them all and just stick them in, and just listen to them. Like when my mom wasn't listening, like yeah, and just I was adapted. I was allowed to listen to anything within reason. Then Eminem came out with I think the Marshall Mathers LP, unreal. And I was in the air, I was maybe like eleven, and I was in the airport about to go yeah. on holiday, and my mom said just to like, cause I was probably like pissing everyone off, just being annoying in the airport. My mom said, you can buy yourself one tape, like a cassette tape from yeah. my Walkman. Um, and she didn't know what artist was which. So she just gave me like a tenor and let me go and pick one. Yeah. And I picked Eminem cause I'd heard, I think it was maybe a real Slim Shady was always on the radio, but I didn't real, I'd only heard the clean version. I didn't realize yeah. there was this world of swearing and all these references. Yes. So I just, <laughs> I just sat for like a week in Mallorca with these headphones on just, 
completely in a different zone being like if everyone knew what I was listening to yeah here. exactly so Jordan you've never drank tea before never we've made you a cup of tea on the tea with me podcast oh, want to get your reaction to this and look be honest okay so just if you hate it say holy shit holy shit it's actually quite nice yeah <laughs> it's actually nice you know <laughs> yes. look don't feel you got to drink the whole thing i think that's the thing with tea maybe ease yourself into it it could just be a one-time only thing where you go I've sipped it. Yeah. And it's okay. I sipped it. It's, it's all right. It's 12. Okay, so i got to do a really rude thing, which I've already okayed with you, yeah. and post some outdoor shows because yeah. uh, they got announced at 12. And I've got to say, these are live, and I did it earlier by mistake. Okay. Done. So you just, you just had your first sip of tea. This is like, this is That's big. iconic. Yeah, it is, it is iconic. iconic thing. Yeah, this is really, really big. I like to think all oh, your music now is going to be influenced by tea. Yeah, literally. I'm going to write like a tea mixtape like, and just <laughs> spit bars about tea. No, 27 no. tracks. Literally, literally. <laughs> like, my first tracks that I did, I was like, to just to get my name out there, kind of, um, from growing up here, I started doing like freestyles on Facebook, and a couple of them kind of did At what quite age? well. Like, roughly what age? I must have been about 15, man. Right. And I, and I had this, like, I used to wear, like, snap packs and all, and just, like, a big hoodie. And, um, <laughs> hey, so did I. <laughs> yeah, literally, man. Oh, MC Beezer. <laughs> but even way before that, I'm in FUBU tracksuits walking oh, about Hollywood at 10. Yes, yes <laughs> Rockefeller. I, I remember, uh, do you remember the brand? There was a brand called Fat Farm, P H A T. I had a Fat Farm hat, and it was, like, um, a beanie, but, like, silk. And it did, it, it was just like, it just went on. You know what I mean? Like there yeah. was no like flapped up bit. And I remember buying it in Gino and Belfast and catching myself in a reflection after a couple of days and going, this one's not for me. Yeah, it's not this the, is not, this is not working for me as an <laughs> identity. So uh, yeah, well, I, I didn't know. you. Knew. So see with the MCBs or stuff, like yeah. I, I love rap. Like that's my, one of my favorite genres of music. Like love it. Me and Mike went to college together over there and, like that's what we would have been listening to, like yeah. from, and we would have done silly like raps, freestyles. <laughs> yeah, like, but we would have like got drunk at, at like sixteen, seventeen, recorded stuff on a on a computer and, <laughs> and burnt the disc of it. Yeah. Um, but the MCB stuff is obviously like comedy rap, but inside yeah. people are like, yeah, "That's just funny. You're not taking that serious." I'm like, "No, no, genuine." In my head, sometimes I'm like Eminem in Eight Mile with a pen and a pad sometimes pretending that it's comedy but like really yeah. i'm really trying to like i'm really Spit trying to do bars like. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm real i'm like am i gonna do a fire in the booth here or or what charlie spock better yeah. call you yeah so, so 15 you're doing freestyles so on facebook i was doing the freestyles and then like i was doing like typical songs like the most popular at the time then remixing them and they were doing quite well and i was like how could i take this to the next level and uh my friend was playing a beat like it's like a proper proper smick tune like it was proper proper smick so i was just like <laughs> get what's the instrumental and i downloaded the instrumental and i just started rapping on them like so i started rapping on like edm tunes okay, and i think close. that's where my adaption started coming and i was just rapping on like smick tunes and i, I put one up on facebook <laughs> and it did really well i was just like everyone was like this is sick man i don't know this like and i was just like oh thanks well i was like and they're just like you should do more like that you should do more so i was just like okay so i did another one and then another one and then they're just everyone was just like that's the thing oh mate you should be doing that more often and i was just like man yeah i don't know if i could keep doing this I'm like how am i gonna adapt from it and i think that's what people sort of grew to love about it is like the way i just started to adapt to each genre and i think that's where it comes from doing the whole genre thing and, and flipping genres and making it my own i think that's where it comes from i suppose it's like comedy for me in a way like there are people who just do the same kind of stuff and like completely like respect that because they're like masters of it but i think what's interesting is trying different things yeah 100 and going down different avenues and let me ask you with like like being an artist in lockdown how has the last year changed if anything you as a as a performer writer artist i think it's made me realize things more on a deeper level and more importantly you know um it's made me more creative i would say because like when you're locked into your own feelings you and emotions you start to like think and overthink and wander off so it made me really adapt and look deeper into uh my roots and what i really came from and what 
it meant for me to do this. So like, that's why like I made a single, it's like a sort of post-punk sort of single called Woke Up. Like I made that during lockdown, you know, those sort of creative ideas, I don't think I would have had if I wasn't in lockdown, if you know what I mean. And I think it was good as well for like, we're, all, we're always buzzing with ideas, but you, you put stuff off and you all do that at some point or whatever. Yeah. But then lockdown, you've like, you've no excuse you to, to do, do the it, things literally. that you would. Th this guy worked on one of your videos. Really? Ah, yeah. oh, which one? Yeah, yeah, the one up in, uh, was in Andytown, up in the house in Michael Costello's. Oh, yes, yes, the, um, the close to you one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. class. You were there, were you? Fun, yeah. yeah 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 oh thanks I do you do you come up with video ideas and stuff yourself or you get someone else to do them? yeah i do and then i also um work with like um prey films and stuff like that and uh videographer there and uh shannon uh, director also helps me with the ideas and they come up with some great ideas as well and i'm just like let's do it so how much are you have you like have you got a record label are you working with management or how, how much are you just doing yourself so I've got management at the moment, so I'm um, with Next Gen Management, and um, I've been doing that for a while, but I'm actually independent. Like a, a lot of people don't know that I am independent, and I do a lot of it myself. I mix and master myself. I edit the video, I edit the um, tracks, sorry, edit the tracks, do all that myself, and then I um, distribute it, everything. And then um, I work in with a producer, and we just work together and bash heads together and make the product out. I work with my guitarist as well, Lewis, and that's that's my team. You know, I really do have a small little team that are all based here, you know. I, I respect that because I can barely just do this bit of it. I have to have people that like, I can't do, see like these desks and stuff that we have. I don't know what they do. I don't know these cameras. I wouldn't yeah. have the first notion on how to make that work. Literally. So like, because at the start, like I used to do some of my own videos and some of my own editing. But there's people who are far better at it than me. Like I'm, I'm so bad with it. But I think lockdown was good for me because then I had to actually work out, okay, how do I do this? And I was at shooting stuff in my own house with a green screen. And yeah, I mean, a lot of times I wasn't killed. Like a lot of times with the green screen, I would move my arm and it would just go out of shot. You know, like yeah. <laughs> I'd still work on it. But like I have a lot of respect for people that can do more than one. You know, like the idea of producing your own stuff and things like that. Your video, I was saying, your videos always like look good. Like yeah, they look, that's the thing. I have to have they, it like that. They don't look like they're done here, which is a com as someone who makes stuff here. I think that's a big compliment. Yeah, of like, I take that as a compliment. It's like high that. production concepts for them are always interesting. Um, but let me ask you, if you were given like a hundred grand that had to be spent on a video, what would you what would you do? Would you shoot it here? Do you have somewhere in mind of like, fuck, I'd love to do this thing? See, I have not with my mindset at the moment like from when i started it there was always a thing in my head is this like because people always told me like oh you should move over there to go and do that you should go and do that in england that's where you that's where it is that's where you blow up or you do it in america and that was always in my head i was like no i don't i'm gonna prove that you can do it here like i would shoot like a movie like if i had like 100k to do i would shoot a bloody movie and i would make it like something that people haven't seen before that like, that's the way I, I have to think and make things go out that way and from here, man, I would just, I would shoot everything here with what I have. I always like to work with what I have and make it the best it can be. What age are you, Jordan? I'm 22 now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like a very impressive age to kind of know what you want to do and be doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like it took me so long to figure out exactly what I want to do and kind of be comfortable in it. Yeah. You know, I spent, I don't know if you if you had this yourself, but... I spent as like a comedian I probably spent a long time not knowing like what sort of comedian I was yeah and that's maybe because I didn't try a load of different stuff you know like we were saying earlier I think I just was like oh there's only one way to do this there's only one way to write there's only one way to kind of deliver your stuff mm -hmm. and then as you get older and probably travel more as well and do some comedy in the states or somewhere else you go actually there's a million ways to do this and lockdown is probably good for me to refine it a wee bit more 100 percent. you know to refine 100%. it a bit more so you yeah because if you say hip-hop to people they are going to say you know america they yeah. are going to say london so is that something you like you, i take it you'd love you'd like to perform in those places but you're sort of saying you this is home like this is where you want to be based. this is this is my home like that's that i here i represent on my back like you know but at the same time it's like 
I can st I still push my content out there and it does get there and they resonate with it. They don't really know where I'm from at 100 percent. They're just like, oh, just another artist, you know, and that's what I want to see. I want it to see for the artistry, not just for where I'm based or whatever. But I would definitely love to perform in like America and yeah. um, do more shows in London. I've done a few shows in London already, but it's just going out and doing more in like America, the States and branching out, even Japan. Like that's one thing I really want to go to. I really want to branch out in Japan because like I'm a big Japanese fanatic, like yeah. I it genuinely, if you get a Japanese tour, let me open for no, you. No, exactly. I, you can't. I you can like just the crack idea every joke you want. <laughs> I like the idea. I'll do ten minutes before you, or like, or if you want me to rap, you know, I'm more than happy to MC Beezer. MC Beezer featured me, like yeah, hundred oh, percent <laughs> in Japan. If I had hundred k, me and you would fly to Japan. Hundred percent. We'd drink, we'd eat sushi, we'd drink tea, and we would just we would just make a music video. Nah, imagine, imagine just making a video in Japan as well. Ooh. Don't even, don't even like. I'll be. I have to. I have to. It's one of my dreams. I have to do it. I'm, I'm like, in like Asia and quite a lot of those places, like they have some like mad technology. Exactly. And do you know what I'm? I even can't get over. It, and they've probably done more impressive stuff since this. You know the sushi belt, the conveyor belt that just goes round in the restaurant. And you just yeah, pick yeah, off yeah. you want. I can't even get over the technology of that. that it's belt. so mad, isn't it? I just don't know how that system works. You know, oh, you just yeah, pick yeah, off yeah. whatever you want. Uh, that creative, that blows my mind, and I presume they have even more impressive stuff than that, like toilets with Bluetooth and stuff. Yeah, like there's a lights now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's so Northern Charger. Irish. Yeah. That we're just impressed by like a belt that goes around and just lights, just yeah, in general. Literally. Like they put lights in something. That's class to me. Like, <laughs> what? What's the like? What's a reaction here when like? Say like I don't know your neighbors or something. You say like oh, I'm a hip hop artist. Like, do you think people have a different perception of what that actually is? Yeah, especially <laughs> with me because they do, and then they hear my music. They're like, oh, I could. like so. I think <laughs> it depends on age wise. Yeah. So if it's like an elderly person, they're just like, uh, oh, hip hop. Oh, what? I'm not too sure about that. You know. <laughs> There's, it's a very it's very aggressive isn't it and i'm just like it's not that aggressive like it's just like it depends who you're listening to and they're just like well i've heard a lot of bad words i'm just like well not in mine mine's quite clean like and they're just yeah, like oh, yeah. okay and they're just like do you like eminem and then i'm just like yeah i do like eminem and they're just yeah. like oh cool and then i think if it's someone else they're just like oh cool <laughs> I like, and then they just start listing off like NWA tracks and, and like really old tracks, like yeah. vinyls that I've never heard of. And I'll, and then I'll go back and I sometimes I'll go back and listen to them. I'll be like, oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> they actually know their stuff. Like, and then they're just like, oh, the old Biggie and Tupac. I get that one as well. Yeah, it's well, weird. Wu Tang, Wu Tang Clan hoodies. Yeah, were worn by ninety eight percent of the population here in like around what 2001 2002 yeah nobody could outside of gravel pit no one could have named your song <laughs> like bad. nobody but i i had a white i had a white wu-tang clan hoodie with a big big red w and if i had have traveled outside of here and people had to say uh, my fubu had <laughs> a daishiki i mean if people if people had to say it outside of here like oh you would uh, you know you big fan, like what songs do you like i would have just been like the one about the gravel pit I and mean, then i don't know anything else and thankfully now he said that i kind of know a bit a bit more uh, like more of their songs but yeah i mean it's people yeah i guess people's reaction here is also do you get you know i'm a comedian so people go when i say i'm a comedian people go i'll oh, tell me a joke Oh, which I don't want to do which I don't want to do I get know, that one too give me a rap in a bakery <laughs> so that's what I'm saying do yeah. people say to you give me a freestyle give me a rap yeah sometimes I, sometimes I actually do it sometimes what like and then sometimes I'll be like oh another time but, but most of the time I'll just do it like, like do any of these sort of pensioners that are asking you about Eminem do they ever just say like let me let me lay down a beat sometimes yeah sometimes I I, um, I I used to go to uh, I go to uh, like a local church like a Mercy Street and uh, they always they always cracking great jokes. Like uh, they, they, they love the music as well. They love like hip hop. They try. Well, they say they love hip hop. Yeah. But they're adapted <laughs> yeah. to it, you know. And, no, but it's great. But you were saying about older people thinking hip hop is aggressive. Nowadays, it, it's anything but. It's like hip hop now seems to be like well, mainstream hip hop seems to be just really nice. Yeah. Like people 100%. just like people just wearing like a lot of fur. Guys wearing a lot of like <laughs> fur fleeces and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like just loving each other yeah that's what like i mean yeah grow like there was that many 
beefs and rap when I was growing up that I kind of felt part of. Like, you know what I mean? I kind of like felt like oh, that's I've got to choose a side on this East Coast, West Coast thing because they'll be wanting to know where I stand on yeah, it. Literally. You know, it was so aggressive. And now it just seems to be like very, very different, you know? And, and sometimes I'll like, like I think I'm young, around 32, and I think like I got my finger on the pulse. I would know like rap, hip hop, R and B. Yeah. But then I'll put on like a modern playlist, and I don't know anyone. Like it's I'm mad, that old it? woman cause, about Eminem because I just know like Drake. You know what Drake, I mean? I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Drake. You know that's kind. That's kind of it. Um, and growing up here, like you know, did you have a, you, you had a positive experience growing up here? But like putting out videos and and being from here, like have you experienced the other side of it as well? Um, you know what? Very, very small. Like, I, I feel like I got a lot of support here, which a lot of people find surprising. But, like, my local community, like, they've been always supportive, you know. And I I used to play football, you know what I mean? So that kind of got me amongst them. The boys were like, yeah, man. Like, and I think because I'm black, like, it kind of helps. <laughs> it kind of helps, like, a black guy rapping. How typical. But other than that. Oh, like, try it, being a white guy. <laughs> <laughs> I get kicked out of football teams for rapping. <laughs> <laughs> so other than that I think it was alright but the only comments I'd get is like Domani or something like a random comment on YouTube or like Facebook or something just a small hate comment but I, I don't care like you know I've been doing it for like a lot of people at the start to be honest did say like uh, oh why are you doing this here like you like why don't you just do it somewhere else or oh, rapping like some people be like oh you really think you're black don't you I'm just like <laughs> Well, I am black. Like, what? Like, especially in school, because like I was like one of the. There was only a few black people in my school, and everyone would just would see me as a white guy. Like, I was just like, I'm not white, and they're just like, Man, you really think you're black, don't you? Like, I was, I was like, what? That's such a Northern Irish comment. Yeah, it is. You think you're black, do you? You're like li- quite literally. I literally yes. am. Like, but that was one comment that always cracked me up. But other than that, you know, it's all love. Like, yeah. I mean. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we just like, yeah, like race is it like there, people here like don't know enough nearly sometimes to be ra- they don't even know how to be race. You know what I that's mean? Why like, I don't take it that. Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't really take it that deep. Like, but like that's good because I would have, I would have, especially like posting things online as well. Maybe, maybe it's it's a newer thing. Maybe it's like a newer generation thing of there is. I hope like mm. there is less of that. Um, but that's great that like that that hasn't played as 100%. much of a as much of a part but that is so funny that people have asked you do you think, <laughs> do you think you're black? black yeah yeah i've been told that so many times like you really think you're black don't you i was just like well i am like i think you're too packed i'm just like okay. yeah because here probably it's more of a mindset where like because 99 percent of people are white like you say there's probably some people who just don't just think we're all just this one thing yeah literally. you know what i mean and if you've lived here then you're one of the you're the same as everybody yes yeah. so i mean that's them. a good thing as well yeah. like oh, everyone yeah, see yeah. me as the, like you know everyone else they didn't view me any differently and but something i was definitely happy about you know i did get the odd comments but other than yeah. that you know it's all love is there like is there genuinely like a belfast like is there a hip-hop scene in northern ireland it is it is well even when i was coming up i like i would have like Smicks coming up to me asking me for a rap battle and stuff like that like, you know just, be <laughs> just like just like i don't know where just yeah, guys like yeah, jumping out like, of a corset oh, I rap. yeah literally just jump, any of them good <laughs> jump out of, yeah literally just come up to me in town or something and just be like yo man let's have a freestyle rap battle did and, you did you sometimes get the wrong idea to think it was going to be a threat where a guy's like i'm gonna fuck it you're like oh shit i'm yeah. gonna fucking battle you here <laughs> yeah literally and then they just come out and say a rap battle and they're just like okay were any of them ever good like, sometimes yeah you'd be surprised yeah there's like there's some really good rappers here and i'm just like oh damn like guys spitting <laughs> bars there is a belfast rap scene really coming up and there's some great guys coming out honestly probably back in the day as well it would have been unheard of for people to rap in their own accents here because we hate our accents or we think our accents are terrible or something i don't think they are at all no so i would imagine that belfast rappers nowadays are probably embracing it more that like this is the way they sound 100%. because 
I am. I would also like to see guys that rap from here, but in an American accent. Like I could watch that all day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'd be a big fan of just watching that because yeah. I like the idea of it. And like when I was younger, like that's what you would have. That's what you would have just done. Yeah. You know, if you were doing stuff. But I like the idea that there is just like guys from Belfast, like especially some Smicks as well, just like str- like rapping. shredding it, like spitting some bars. I'm there's, just like, Damn. there's like a loyalist guy, who's good. Really? Yeah, he's like he's well into loyalism, but he's <laughs> what? like he's called uh, Young Young Spencer. Who's Young Spencer? Dan, see if you can bring some of it up. He's a guy. He loves two things: rap and loyalism. Loyalism. And he's done like he's like done a few like remixes of stuff, and he he like he's a hundred percent doing it in his own accent, and and it's like it's good. You know, I kind of yeah. like some of it. No, I want to see that. He doesn't breathe, he doesn't take breaths, but he's... He's actually good. Blue down the What? <laughs> You're an Ulster guy. That's brilliant. <laughs> Wait, the beat in the background? It's a Isn't remix that... angle of Blue, Double Day, Double Day. day. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking, oh he loves it, like, he loves it. Oh. And, uh, yeah, Young Spencer, shout out to Young Spencer. Yeah, big up Young Spencer. <laughs> Dude, is, is that the cipher that we need? You, Young Spencer, Spencer. and me? Yeah, MC Beezer. I think that that's the future. Walking through East Belfast. Yeah, uh, literally. Just doing it. Oh, that's very enjoyable. Union Jack on the back. Young Spencer. <laughs> I love it. Like, and then I've seen photos of him and I was like, is he going to like be trying to like, you know, is he going to dress up a bit? You know, is he going <laughs> to wear like a bit of like Rockefeller and that kind of thing? It's like, no, he's just, he's, he looks like he sounds. Serious? Yeah, he's just a fella. Like, what a lad. He's just a fella beating about, and he has he's some other stuff, and I'm listening to it going, oh, there's a reference or two there you could take out. Yeah. Still. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe, that, maybe we find, like, maybe that's a way to end the troubles. Maybe we find his counterpart, you know, a rapper who's just like so Republican but loves rap, team them up, for a, together, team yeah. up for a mixtape, and, Tag it's, team. and it's, all, it's all good. Um, <laughs> so, like, what's, what's like the next? So, I just, I don't know, I was posting out some shows because we can finally do some outdoor shows mm-hmm. so like what's what's the the summer looking like for you what are you planning to do and- craziness I'm, I'm just trying to do craziness that's how that's how, that's the best way i can put it i'm going to be making like more visuals with like creative concepts and definitely more shows and like the shows i'm doing now i'm just trying to up the game so i i have a full live band so i do perform with a full live band and everything but i'm trying to create more concepts on stage with the band and trying to put that out with the material as well. So it's the shows are kind of telling the story. I'm really trying to adapt that and, and push that out. Because I always like to bring something different when I come up on stage. Like I remember at the start of my career, I used to bring out like a smoke flare on stage. Like that was my big thing. And then I had like a, a money gun with like my fear, like the notes had my face on it. Plus. With like my Instagram on the back. Like just small stuff I used to do for like promo and stuff like that. But um, yeah. Uh, the the smoke flare thing I did at the start and the smoke flare thing I remember I had to stop that because like uh, one of the guys uh, it, it, it lit off and he didn't know what it was the guy that owned the stage and he freaked out the big guy with like a big uh, top hat and he, he came on stage and kicked it off in the middle of my show I think I have a video somewhere but it's like he kicked it off and everyone was like <gasps> and I was like oh goodness he wasn't happy and then when I I had finally done and I finished it came off the steps the guy just screamed at me he's like that's a health hazard and I was just like I'm just like I'm sorry man like it's for the show and he was just like well that's a health hazard and I was just like I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry and then, in a barn full of hay you're yeah, like no it's part of the show literally and he, he wasn't happy with that but I just do crazy stuff every time I go on stage that's my little thing so uh, yeah. well like what yeah so if you're if you're doing a show at the minute are you doing solo shows or are you on with like you're on with the bunch of other artists um i'm i've done my i did my first headline probably before covid and that was that went really Where? really well i did in black box oh yeah that was my first headline show so i did, I did my one. first headline show in black box no way a- really. air high five corona five <laughs> um but um yeah i did that one but i've been doing like um uh just shows with other people you know like lineups and stuff like that and then like headlining a couple a couple stuff and then I've been doing festivals, so I tried to do as many festivals as possible and lock them down. Um, I did the NI Music Prize, actually, I think maybe two years ago, 2019. Right. 
um, with Snow Patrol and stuff like that. And that was really cool. Um, got a, I got a shout out from Gary Lightbody, which was nice. Class. Shared one of my songs. I'm like screaming in the middle of the song. So I <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good, nice to know that he likes that song. But yeah, <laughs> that, that was fantastic. Lightbody just loves screaming. Yeah. He's he a big to. fan of, of, that's a genre. Literally. You know? Scream. Scream. Uh, yeah, I mean, it feels like. It was almost. I think it was almost worse for me because I got to do a, a big run of shows in September. Yeah, and I think it would be easier for me if I hadn't have done those. Yeah, because I thought as soon as that happened, it's all back to normal, kind of. Literally, it was indoor, socially distanced, but in the limelight. But it felt like regular shows. It didn't feel socially distanced. Yeah, and then because it stopped after that, it was like a false dawn. Yeah, if you know what I mean. But I just can't wait to be on just feel that you know that like five minutes before you go on stage yeah, yeah, yeah. just that, oh. that nerve the adrenaline the nerves the adrenaline rush I love what do you that. like with nerves i think it goes when i'm on stage it's before stage that i've i just feel like ooh, yeah but I, I feel like i'm very very confident when i get on stage like even before it a bit sometimes i'm just like i'm just ready to jump on like i get so excited and eager to jump on and that's that's my thing it's just like i love having a dramatic entrance that's my thing like i have like a little intro and everything and i just love a dramatic entrance but nah that's my thing but i've seen you're doing the um the ssc arena i've yeah. seen your you're like your face everywhere yeah, so yeah, fire, yeah. Man. So that feels so alien to me where it's crazy when you're in the in the middle of doing shows and you're going to different venues you just you're just thinking like a stand-up whereas at the minute even the idea of performing anywhere feels like odd to me you know it feels yeah. a bit alien and the idea that i'm doing there is is mental. it's crazy man it it's meant is. like it but it's weird how almost like normal it feels like it's not um it's not like entitlement it's not like oh i should be playing there i think it's mad that i'm playing there it's inspiring for people like for like me like, you know like to see that and be like it is possible and that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to be that guy to be like this can be possible for this for people coming behind me and what you've done, you know, that's but, very, you know, inspiring for I me think as well. It goes back to what you are saying earlier of some people will look at you like, why are you doing that? Why do you want to do this? But there, there's only very few people who think like that. It's just their voices sometimes are the loudest. That's so, so true. So when you just go, well, why am I listening to that? Because I, I, that's maybe why it took me a while to even do I think I've been doing stand up for about six years before I did my first headline like solo show mm -hmm. um, and I probably was worried about posting that online like hey I'm doing a show you know you might have had one comment of someone oh being God. like why are you doing this but yeah. it's now just that on a bigger scale it's like well I'm just gonna like go and try and do this and if I can get away with it like great you've done it yeah, yeah. And, and there's the only people as well that are saying like why are you doing this and who do you think you are like there's something wrong with it, with their situation yeah you know they're projecting like they they have some some issues they have something going on like what would make you go online and question someone's aspirations you know you got to exactly. think like there's there's a problem there it'd be different if it was like your hero your hero you know what i mean yeah, if i was like can't wait to do this and then like seinfeld jumped in my comments and oh. was like you're a prick mate don't you're, do this yeah. <laughs> i just cancel it <laughs> oh man my, my, my chest would Who, hurt, who's like, your who's your hero musically my hero flip i have so many i think whew, that's alive um is that an artist yeah it'd be an artist it'd probably be like Kendrick, Drake. Oh, you said, I said, who's your musical hero? You said, that's alive. And I was very close to going, oh yeah, yeah, I like his stuff. I like his stuff. <laughs> I genuinely thought that was a, that was someone. That was an like, artist. Yeah, yeah, you mean someone who's living. I genuinely thought you mentioned a rapper and I nearly went, yeah, you know, I know him. <laughs> like most of my inspiration. You are know dead. what I was going, I, I like his old stuff. That yeah. works with any rapper. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Who's he? Literally. No, uh, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> oh, God. People do that all the time, Literally. especially especially with the likes of rap. You know, like you mentioned an artist who's coming up. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I get it. I get it. I like him. <laughs> oh my goodness. You hate, yeah, I mean that would be the worst. That I would hate to do a show in front of my comedy heroes. That's one. That's a fear for me. I think so. Yeah, I think some people would love to do that, and if it went well, I would love to do it. But it's the pr I don't. I care so much about I would care so much about the opinion of that person yeah. that I would just be scared about about doing it like I did the Edinburgh Fringe Festival about six years ago and I was halfway through my set and it was like an okay night you do like 
28 shows over 28 nights at the Edinburgh Fringe. And you sort of go through the motions sometimes. And I was having like an okay show. And I thought I saw Steve Coogan, Alan Partridge, like about six rows back. Damn. So I started to like, I was like, this is fight or flight. I've got to like step up. And I start really like throwing all the best bits out. And I'm, That's when you I'm get the cotton cooking. mouth. Yeah, but it won, it won them. I, real, oh. I realized at the end the at the end of the show when the lights came up, I think the guy was like Romanian or something. It was not. <laughs> it was a Romanian Steve Coogan. It wasn't him. But yeah, it definitely oh like the slightest thing can make me like get real get real nervous. Yeah, I don't get nervous in general, like about anything. But then a, a, a very minor thing can happen, and it can just throw me off. Yeah, like if I see someone, if I'm on a mix bill with other acts, and there's someone in the front row who uh, just like has their phone out and not paying attention. I then see that as a challenge and then I'm trying to get that person to engage with it without yeah. directly saying, put your phone away, what are you doing? Yeah. And it become, and then I get distracted by that. Wow. You know? So these things don't end, do they? No. Damn. no I don't think anybody, I think the moment where you get on stage and you're just at ease with everything and good or bad, it doesn't, I think that's when you probably like lose your edge I think or, for me it's like I just pretend that I'm like in my room and yeah. then I'm just going nuts like because like for me it's like people kind of feed off your energy like if I'm given like dry energy people are going to be dry so if I'm given nuts I don't care what you think this is my music I'm sick and I'm, I'm enjoying myself people are going to just enjoy seeing you enjoying yourself and just resonate that you know they're going to start enjoying themselves that's how i see it anyway 100 percent. i think yeah. if you go out like it's the best show you've ever done yeah it will be good i did a um a tv thing during lockdown when when it, there was like outdoor stuff allowed yeah. um and it was like a bit like a big deal bbc thing first time it was going to be on like network tv so not just shown here so i was like fuck <laughs> uh, really like a wee bit nervous and it was it was a tough gig it was outdoor some people were drunk some people had already left because it was free tickets because it was bbc um, and I was going on last, just luck of the draw, going on last. Yeah. People had left, some people were having a tough one, and I very nearly fell into the exact same trap and went out like with my shoulders down. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of seconds before I went on, I was like, I'm going to go on like this is the greatest gig that's ever happened. Yeah. And I just went on with a big smile on my face, and, <laughs> big and it was good. great. It was, it was great. It well. But just because... I was looking at them like, you guys are a great crowd. Yeah. You know, and then they start to act like, oh, we're... We're you know, great. Yeah, there's some guy the whole night, he's, you know, he, he maybe like was heckling people or he's texting or not paying attention. All of it, I'm making eye contact with him. Yeah. I'm like smiling and then he's like, oh. Yeah. You know, so it just it feeds. Yeah, it's it. something, yeah. That's fantastic. Firstly, that's what I'm really, really about. It's just energy, man. Like, giving good energy and people do give that back sometimes but see like you having a cup of tea and having a sip of tea there the energy in this room is very good at the minute oh so tea is the magic potion tea <laughs> is the key to everything let me have another no it's gonna be cold is it i prefer i prefer you didn't that's cold tea yeah right and now it's sweet as well now <laughs> you find that there is a very fa and, and this transcends every there is a very that's the line yeah between success and failure <laughs> you literally couple of minutes either side tea nicest drink in the world i love it it's my favorite thing i'm having about eight cups of tea a day i've got a problem i'm drinking it i need an intervention if that goes slightly cold if if i have cold tea in the podcast i'll throw yeah. the cup at his head and then <laughs> i'll make another cup of tea and throw it in his face cold literally. tea no no so forget that's about the worst it one. see i'm gonna learn and that. it's a metaphor it's like you know this looks great this looks like a cup of tea. Yeah. Mm, I enjoy tea. Have a sip of it. It's cold. I don't always judge things before you find out more about them. Yeah. And there's a lesson there. You what? know what I mean? The lesson is drink your tea quite quickly. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> right, it's right. going to be cold. <laughs> That's true. So, uh, yeah, just something to... So, I'll never, I'm going to have to drink tea fast. Not too fast. See, there's another one. <laughs> if you dr that's another. Don't. It's like you know, people like taking everything offered to them quickly. Though you'll burn out. You'll oh. literally you'll burn your throat and your mouth. If you drink it too fast. There's that sweet spot, and that's when you gotta know when to. So it's strike. a steady pace. Steady pace. Take your time. Don't try and impress anyone with being a quick tea drinker, and don't leave it too long. Okay, I'm gonna start that. And that's the message I want to leave people with. 
Take your time when it comes take to time. Tea. Take your time. Enjoy it. Jordan, thanks very much for coming on the thanks podcast. Thanks for having me. This is a great opportunity. Yeah, Appreciate I it. I would like to borrow that tracksuit at some yeah, point. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Give it to you in the mail. <laughs>